Hello, Radiant Church. Pastor Jeremy here. I'm standing in uh, front of Vancouver Radiologists. Now, why are we here? Uh, the reason we're here is because a very significant event in my life took place right here. And what is that? Well, back in 2006, Shekinah and I were expecting our second baby. Micaiah, our oldest, was uh, a one-year-old, and uh, we went to our doc doctor's appointment to just do a routine checkup when we were about 12, we were 12 weeks along. And while we were there, uh, Shekinah went in with the doctor and we, uh, I took Micaiah into this kind of little play area because she was one. And while I was in there playing with Micaiah, waiting to hear the news of how the uh, appointment went, uh, the doctor came and found me, or a midwife came and found me and said, we can't find a heartbeat, so you might want to come in. So we went in with Micaiah and they were looking for a heartbeat, doing everything they could and they couldn't find one. And so obviously we we're quite concerned. And so they sent us right here to Vancouver Radiologist to do an ultrasound to determine uh, if uh, what was going on with the baby. And so uh, here we came. And so our greatest fear was that the baby had died. And that's why they weren't finding a heartbeat. And uh, so we went and they made a quick appointment. Um, we went in without Micaiah this time. My grandparents actually came and parked right here and uh, uh, watched Micaiah for us while Shekinah and I went inside. And I remember waiting in the lobby there uh, for them to call us back and take a look and find out what was going on. And I remember praying and just pleading with God that our baby would be alive, that he would, uh, that we would save our baby. And I remember sitting there weighing out something that was very, very weighty and had a lot of gravity to it. And some people in the office were discussing um, the recent Seahawks Super Bowl that had taken place where they had lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I had been quite upset about the fact that they had lost, but I remember them talking about that and realizing or thinking, I don't care about the Seahawks. All I care about is the life of my baby and God, please, please save our baby. Eventually, they called us back and uh, they took a look and the radiologist wasn't supposed to tell us the news uh, or they had to give that news to the doctor. Um, and, but she looked and we could just read her face that the baby had died. And I remember coming out and, and, and they did eventually confirm that. And we, I remember coming out to my grandparents and they of course just asked, what's the news? Is the baby okay? And I couldn't even utter the words, no, I just wept. And they took Micaiah and, uh, 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 for us and um, my mom eventually, and my mom and dad took Micaiah and Shekinah and I just went home and we grieved. We prayed, we contacted some people, let them know what was going on. And uh, we just went before the Lord and prayed together and cried together. And I remember a really unique thing happening at that moment. Shekinah was in the bedroom and I went out and sat in the kitchen. I was just sitting there and I was confused. I was perplexed, frankly, because I had a joy like I'd never felt before. A pure joy that was present in the midst of my sorrow. And I remember being so perplexed going, God, why is there joy right now? Because everything that I'd been praying for, everything I was hoping for, everything seems broken and sad and, and grief stricken right now. How is it that I have this joy? And what was, what was happening there? Why did I have that joy? It wasn't just that God was present. It wasn't just that I sensed him near. There was something even deeper than that that was going on. It was that at that moment, I was experiencing a love for God like I had never experienced. Because usually, I love God because He's good. I love God because He's God. But I usually infer God's goodness based on circumstances going well in my life. But here, circumstances were not going well. And yet God was there. He was present like a light that shines when all other lights go out. And usually I infer, as I said before, infer God's goodness and I love him because he seems good because things are going well. But here I was able to love God for his own sake. I was loving God simply because he was God and he was good. And that is an interesting joy that we all can find when we're going through difficult times is that God is present and His light shines in our life even when all other lights go out. And we can learn in those moments of sorrow to love Him for His own sake, to love Him because He's God, to love Him because He's holy, to love Him because He is eternally there. And so I encourage you 
If you're in the middle of a time of sorrow, if you're in the middle of a time of distress, or if you find yourself in a, such a time, because when we walk this earth as sojourners, I guarantee you will ha encounter times of suffering, encounter, encounter times of grief. And what do we do in those moments? We can either be angry at God for not allowing things to go the way we want them to go, or we can cry out to God, lament and weep and wail and work things out in His presence and experience the joy of loving God for His own sake. So I encourage you to do that because we were meant to love God simply because He's God. And not just recognize that He's good because things are going the way we want them to go, but love Him because He is good always, simply because He's God. Blessings on you. I pray if you're going through a time of sorrow that this would help you in some measure. Blessings on you.